Okay, 2.1.2, graphing quadratics. All right, so um, we're going to just start at the basic. I'm uh, going to graph a parabola. We're going to use a table and um, also introduce the parent function for a quadratic. So what is the name for, a, for this type of function? That is a quadratic function. And the reason we knew that is from back when we talked about polynomials. The highest power is 2. All right, what are some of the characteristics of the graph? So let's just go ahead and jump right in uh, using this table. Oh, sorry about that. Let me fix this line here. Using a table uh, of x's and y values. Now, what I like to do is I used, like to use points that are right near the origin because it's easy to graph. And I used, like to use small numbers. Um, and... I want to pick some positive and some negative. So I'll put 0 in the middle. I'll pick some negative 1, negative 2, uh, positive 1, positive 2. And those are the x values that we're going to put into the function input. And then the resulting value, once you evaluate, that's going to be your y value. So for instance, y is what happens when you plug negative 2 into this function. So for instance, if I put negative 2 in and I square it, that would be 4. And if I put negative 1 in and I square it, that would be 1. 0 in and I square it, that would be 0. The resulting values are the y values. 1 squared is 1. 2 squared is 2. So now what I've got is a set of ordered pairs. Negative 2, 4. Negative 1, 1. 0, 0, 1, 1, and 2, 4. And what you see here, hopefully, is some repetition with the y values and some balance with our x values. Now, we're just going to go ahead and graph these points. So we got a point at negative 2, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Point at negative 1, 1. 0, 0, 1, 1. Positive 2, 4. And you can already see the U-shape that is unique to a quadratic. All right, that U-shape is one of the characteristics of this graph. In addition to that, you could talk about how it is symmetric. So we have the same number of points left as we do right. So you can actually draw a line right down the middle of this graph and cut it in half, and everything on the left and everything on the right are kind of mirror images of each other. So there's another characteristic of this graph. All right, we call the graph a parabola. P-A-R-A-B-O-L-A, -A -A, parabola. All right, so if I just go ahead and continue to pick points here, so let's say that I picked um, negative 3 and positive 3, um, negative 3 squared is 9 and positive 3 squared would also be 9 so we would have an order pair at negative 3 9 and positive 3 9 alright so if I go left 3 and I can go up 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 and then 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And then now we can just go ahead and graph our parabola. Now keep in mind that this parabola is curved. So try to keep as much of a curve while hitting all your points as possible. So I'm going to try this again. And you, you might have to graph a couple of times before you really get a good feel for how this is going to go. All right, so that's a little bit better. And this function does continue to go upward and outward, and you get that U-shape of the parabola. A couple of things to talk about this. This point right here that's at the bottom, we would call that a minimum point, and its formal name is the vertex. It's the minimum because it's at the very lowest point of the graph there are no points below it only points above it if the graph was flipped upside down for some reason 
then instead of the vertex being at the bottom, it would be at the top. Therefore, it would be a maximum. An important thing to point out about these points over here on the right side, those are the points the, of the parent function for a quadratic. So for every time you graph y equals x squared, those are the same x and y values that you'll use. Now, you could continue to find more and more and more values by inputting more x values and getting back the corresponding y values, but these points are the same points every single time. So if you can remember that these points are where they are, then you'll be able to graph any parabola using the original function's points. So we're going to talk about transformations like what we talked about in 2.1.1. So we're going to take these points and then move them left, move them right, move them up, move them down, and we're going to still use the same points. So if you can get used to these, it's going to make your life a lot easier as far as graphing is concerned. Okay. Now, if we move to the practice, you can kind of see where we're going with the transformations. So in this first example, remember we're comparing it to the parent function y equals x squared. And y equals x squared is the original, that's why we call it the parent function, and everything that's a version of y equals x squared is you know a subsequent almost like a child function or an offspring function they're the result of a transformation so right away you're asking yourself okay this is a change to the parent function and this is a change to the parent function so what must have happened to this graph if it now has that equation well we learned that if you affect x values you're moving the function right or left and if you affect essentially y values, that's the things outside of the x values, you're moving up or down. So x value transformations, they behave opposite. So right here it says minus 1. So instead of moving right, it's actually, sorry, instead of moving left with negative, you're actually moving right one unit. So we would be translate right one and then out here this is affecting my y values and it's adding so that means it's translate up two remember only the x changes opposite not the y values all right currently if you think about this in terms of moving right and moving up the vertex of our parent function was at 0, 0. That is the vertex of the parent function. So if my graph moves right and it moves up 2, then that means my vertex moved right 1 and up 2. So if I'm at 0, 0 and I move right 1, that's going to put me at positive 1. And if I'm at 0, 0 and I move up 2, that's going to move my y value to positive 2. So with these new changes, this is my vertex 1, 2. All right. If you want to look at this graphically, I can graph the parent function on here very quickly using those and just some of those points that we just discovered. I'm sorry. that we just discovered when we did our discovery of quadratics. So this is the parent function, what I've got here. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the new translated graph and we could see the difference between the two. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to move every single point, right one and up two. So starting with the vertex, right one and now up two and there's my new vertex right here so then this point's going to go right one and up two this point's going to go right one and up two so we're going to be right here this point's going to go right one and up two and this point's going to go right one and up two and now i've got a parabola that has been translated 
right one unit, and up two units. Okay, AOS, AOS stands for Axis of Symmetry. Remember, one of the characteristics of a parabola is that you could draw a line right down the middle of it and you can fold it in half or see two mirror images. So this is a vertical line. So that means x equals some number. It's a vertical line through the vertex. So essentially, if you know the vertex, then it's just a vertical line through that point. Essentially meaning it's x equals whatever the x value is. So our x value for our vertex is 1. So the axis of symmetry equation is x equals 1. Well, why is it x equals and not y equals? x equals equations are vertical lines. An axis of symmetry is a vertical line. So x equals 1. 1 is the x value of the vertex. x equals 1 is my axis of symmetry equation. Now I'm looking at my vertex here, right here. Is that a maximum or a minimum? It is a minimum as it's at the bottom and all the points are above it. No points are below it. It is a minimum. Next transformation, um, or sorry, next example has some different transformations in it. You can see that we've got three things that have happened to change us from our parent function to our current function. Um, we just work our way from left to right going through the different transformations and we'll identify them. The first is affecting the y values because it's outside the parentheses and it's multiplication. So that means that that is a vertical stretch times 2. So every y value is going to be multiplied by 2. Next, we have some, we have a translation. Even though it says minus 2, that means I do the opposite because it's affecting the x value. So it's going to be translate right opposite two units. And then finally, plus tells me another translation, but this is affecting y values as it's outside the parentheses. So translate up, up five units. Okay, so three things happen there. Now, I moved right two units and I moved up five units, so that means my new vertex is at positive two, positive five, and my axis of symmetry is going to go through that x value, x equals two, and now that I need to go ahead and graph it, I'm going to put the, the new graph, I'm going to use the old parent function points and then move them according to what we've talked about. So the parent function is here and I'm gonna just leave the points like that for now now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take those values and I'm going to multiply the y values by 2 and then move right 2 and up 5 so this this point here is negative 2 positive 4 y values being multiplied by 2 are gonna take me to 8 so that will take me from negative 2, 4 up to negative 2, 8, 5, 6, 7, 8. And then I'm going to go right to 1, 2 units and up 5 units from here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 will put me somewhere in the neighborhood of that. Do it again. I'm at negative 1, 1 multiplied by 2 puts me at 2. Let's go right 2 and up 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, and there's 5. Okay, my vertex is at 0, 0. Multiplied by 2 is 0. Right, 2, and up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's my new vertex, and you could even check it over 2, up 5. All right, 1, 1, that's going to put me, multiply by 1 puts me at 2. Right, 2, up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And you can already see the balance here. And finally, I'm at 4, multiply by 2 puts me at 8, 5, 6, 7, 8, over 2, 1, 2, up 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 will be in this neighborhood here, and I draw my parabola, and that would be the new version of the parent function 
That is y equals 2 times x minus 2 squared.